delighted to have you here with us, Deepak. I will hand over to you and we look forward to your presentation. I welcome you all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants. So let me begin. So let us begin by looking at what we refer as uh, this digital uh, first, or rather, we can also term it as digital revolution, right? But uh, when we talk about the disruptions that this digital revolution has brought, or uh, you can call it the changes, right? So is that the is this the only time the world is witnessing disruptions or changes at this scale? Well, the answer is no. Right from very early on, since the days of agricultural revolution, and then followed by industrial revolution, and of course then by internet or computer revolution, right? So we have, uh, as a world, seen, you know, a huge amount of changes in the way businesses operate, right? And with each of such revolutions, there are newer possibilities. There are possibilities to redefine every aspect of the businesses. While there are uh, some negatives, right? While we see that, you know, we see a lot of businesses getting bundled out right? and are not able to withstand the changes that come at such a fast pace. At the same time, on a positive note, let us look at a perspective of how we can embrace these changes, how we can accept the changes and use the opportunity in hand to define new way of doing business. That brings me to the next slide, which is the business 4.0 from a perspective uh, defined by us at TCS. And uh, I'm happy to share that uh, some of the uh, details that I'm going to talk about from how Digital First uh, is impacting commercial aviation would be based on this perspective that I'm going to explain now. So if you look at the key four business behaviors from Business 4.0 perspective, so on the left, you see embrace risk. So we all have seen how it has uh, impacted so many organizations, which I just mentioned, you know, had to get bundled out, right? So moving beyond rigid planning and operational barriers with an agile strategic approach is what uh, we term as embracing risk. It is very, very important in today's perspective of doing business in business 4.0. Era. Right. Leveraging the ecosystem, which means collaborating with partners inside and outside the supply chain to create new products and services. On the right, I have customized, which is another business behavior that you can relate to, which is nothing but personalizing the products and services to a market of each and every customer and even to the level of transactions that customer do. And not just that, but at a scale, at a very large scale. And finally, but an important behavior, which is to create exponential value, which is nothing but adopting business models that leverage value from transactions at multiple levels and address the new market and the new possibilities within businesses. And to enable these four new behaviors or the behaviors of this new era, we have also coined four technology enablers. First one, of course, being, uh, you all have been you know, part of it, right? It's, it's, it's in our day-to-day -day lives now. So we use cloud in IT and processing services. I don't have to talk more about it. Uh, intelligent is nothing but to develop 
new business model and explore that how we can give provide more and more customer value agile uh, this is in particular very important as of today though initially we started implementing or utilizing the agile concept only from software or it perspective but as of today it is all the aspects of operating businesses that need to be agile and then comes automated which is to free up workers or our people so that they can focus on more valuable tasks well you can go on to tcs.com and get more details on this perspective and i use these terms at the start so that we can utilize these terms as we go forward in the presentation now let us look at how uh, commercial aviation fares against other industry verticals in the adoption of uh, these four business behaviors that i just mentioned and you will see that there are of course leaders early adopters and followers these are the three categories that we have for uh, this uh, you know entire section of uh, industry and if i have to compare commercial aviation so we can see 10% of the leaders are from the travel and hospitality which is commercial aviation and the related supporting industry and if you look at the early adopters so yes there is again a sizable amount 12% of uh, the early adopters comprises of commercial aviation organizations and in the last group which is the followers there are 8% of it so uh, as as you can see there are uh, you know these statistics are part of uh, a very uh, you know a detailed and a, a global research study that was done by ECS for uh, you know senior executives across the industry and uh, my thought was to bring in the flavor of how this adoption is happening for the commercial aviation industry what it now let us look at the adoption of digital technologies and capabilities uh here i have added specific uh, technology capabilities so starting from the cloud automation ai iot and blockchain uh special mention to ai is that this is one area where commercial aviation has uh, been adopting at a faster pace than the other verticals right so With, with this it you know it just brings things to perspective that where uh, the focus for each of the industry verticals are and it also tells that you know nobody is far behind so everyone is trying to ride this wave of digital transformation with a very little margin right and the current time is going to be very very important how we shape things for the businesses of future now while we are talking about businesses it is very important to also understand about the customers or the users or consumers right and i thought this perspective would really help understand a key element of the business 4.0 perspective that i shared at the center of that picture i had mentioned abundance and this is a perfect example of abundance since 2007 and uh, you know the expected smart phone user in in 2021 is is going to increase to almost 50% of the entire population of this world it's a it's a huge huge shift uh, from the consumer behavior or the way consumer has changed uh, from how they used to uh, operate earlier versus now right so this this brings a very very important perspective for the businesses as well to note 
and so now when the customer or the consumer is using smartphone what are their needs what are the kind of challenges the businesses may have right so that brings us to the uh, perspective of the customer side of things which is you know they are looking at you know the products and services to be priced very competitively they want very good experience they want their services to be near the end time best value flexibility personalization and and you know new demands and challenges keep on adding right so with that perspective the organizations also or the businesses also have to be prepared and provision for such demands and challenges and hence digital first that brings me to the how part of digital first while we talk about you know various aspects of uh, digital first or digital transformation let us look at a view of how uh, a, any particular organization or enterprise needs to adopt to uh, this new uh, business 4.0 technology enabler right um while there is a need for digital platforms to be developed by any enterprise uh this is the perspective of adding the the various elements into the uh, digital first or the in the form of digital building blocks of any platform let me start with enterprise data the data that the enterprise is receiving or is generating is you know ever increasing and it's increasing in leaps and bounds this data needs to be transformed so that it can be consumed as an information so the first thing that is required uh, as the part of this platform is to have a set of digital transformation service which can enable this transformation of data into information once we have information not all of it can be consumed or can be utilized by everyone right so we need to come to a point where specific visualization of data is important so that that gives me my kpis or that gives me you know dashboards of for various you know operations or planning or you know any any of the aspects of my business right and while i get these key indicators right with kpis or my key numbers uh, these numbers in silos are not enough for me to take any decision i need to have a view where i can correlate my information from various sources which requires or rather essentially means that we need integration services to correlate things and the data services i am you know using uh terms that not only mean integrating a few uh, systems amongst each other but it can be events it can be uh, you know uh, any data it can be a real time alert or notification there can be uh, an event or data in any form that we may have to integrate and correlate and once we have that correlation configured uh, we will be able to make much more informed decisions and take actions uh, related to my business now all these actions and decisions needs to drive my core business services and through that those core business services then i can see realize uh, my business outcome and the cycle goes on i i need to then look at the outcomes get the feedback see where i need to increase where i need to maybe you know fine tune a little bit so that i can go full circle and redefine my processes in such a way that i know what kind of uh, outcome uh, i am expecting or 
I need to achieve. Right? So that calibration needs to happen, uh, you know, in a ongoing manner. With that, uh, let me quickly take you through uh, two case studies which are related to digital transformation that I was part of. The first one is uh, about identifying a digital building blocks and a roadmap for an airport, which had faced a similar problem or a similar challenge that uh, any enterprise faces without having an overarching digital transformation strategy on how they are going to transform their uh, business. It's not just about IT systems, but it's about how you drive your businesses through your IT. Right? And uh, uh, as you can see in this particular slide, at the core, uh, we had uh, the key uh, in the information systems and the landscape from the airport's uh, enterprise landscape. And then surrounding that, we had given them a roadmap to develop five key uh, enabling or you can say digital building blocks. The first one being the enterprise data management uh, and the data application services. The, the next one was integration, the integration integrated service management and a common security model. And all these services were enabled through a composite platform uh, services. So the, the point I was trying to drive here is that whenever we face uh, uh, any challenge at enterprise level, it needs to be uh, addressed with not only from a particular part of the organization, but it has to be looked at how it will impact at the enterprise level. And that was precisely what we were trying to do in this particular exercise or assignment that we worked on. And on the right hand side, uh, we have shown how uh, we have given a roadmap of parallel work streams for the organization to start executing on the path of digital transformation. So uh, those uh, parallel work streams were first one to have the preparatory work and organizational readiness. Now this is a very, very important aspect because it's not just that a particular team within the organization or a particular department in the organization is ready. It needs to be, the readiness has to be at organizational level. And many times, uh, you know, it can just be a cultural thing, which needs to be handled very, very, uh, in a sensitive manner. Uh, and th that is very crucial to start with. Once you have this readiness, uh, you need to have a core technology team who will take care of the various uh, technology transformation streams, right? So the ones that were identified uh, for this particular scenario was the uh, technology transformation for data, BI integration, and security. The next level was to come up with the, the operational and the governance of uh, the data and BI. And along with that, there were a few strategic areas which were picked up or identified from the list of uh, the, the whole lot of initiatives which were in pipeline. Now, if we go step by step, uh, completing the first four steps, it was much easier for us to identify which initiative or projects should be prioritized, right? So that kind of, you know, comes along with the, the planning that we do in the initial phase or the first four streams that we do. So that was, uh, you know, one of the uh, consulting assignments that we recently did. Now, I'll come to another uh, engagement where we were helping with RPA journey for an airline. Again, uh, a very similar scenario where the organization wanted to utilize and uh, grow in their 
uh, robotic process automation capability. Whereas we figured that this was coming from a very specific group uh, within the organization. And we tried to give not only a solution that fits to the needs of that particular department in the organization, we felt that there is a need on taking the solution and scale it up to the enterprise level. Uh, in the phase one, it was about uh, the evaluation and selection process. Uh, and we also helped the uh, enterprise and the, uh, the team in the organization to uh, look at you know, the various uh, strategies on getting the right product. And we completed a first POC in the phase one to ensure that we are able to demonstrate how this is going to bring change to the business of the customer. In the second phase, we then set up four processes uh, and then did this, completed this uh, project on time as per uh, the need and requirement. And I mean, to everyone's uh, the light, it, it had yielded the results we were looking for. In the phase three, we took the learnings from the first, from the second phase, and then created a factory model to be able to govern and execute large scale automation of similar requirements at enterprise level. And then finally, in, in the phase four, which is the current phase and currently ongoing, we were able to institutionalize the RPA across enterprise and take this journey towards an advanced automation beyond just transactional apps. So I guess uh, as per the time limit given to me, uh, I, I also had to leave some time for the question answers. So over to Steve. Thank you, Deepak. This is Steve. That was that was great. Thank you. Um, and uh, yes, you're right, right on time. Thank you for uh, staying on time. It's very important. Um, so, uh, first question that came in <clears throat> for you, Deepak, is is the airlines have been obviously greatly impacted by the by the pandemic. Um, do you see the need for their digital transformation? Uh, to be even greater now, or are they just simply going to have to put everything on hold because the money's not there? Well, I mean, uh, I would say that, you know, the airlines are the worst hit uh, from all the industries uh, if you look at the impact of the current pandemic. And uh, I, I say, I would see that uh, airlines are, are taking a, a measured approach as of now. Uh, there are two aspects to airline, right? So one is the operations, and the other is you know all the other business uh, to generate uh, you know revenue and other aspects of of airline. Now, right. as you can see, that you know the, the revenue stream has cut, and the operations are are at bare minimal. Uh, it is very important to take measured steps because this situation is not going to stay forever. And the moment things improve. I think airline needs to be prepared to take that uh, you know, increase as well as there will be changes in the behavior uh, mm. from, from customers, right? So at, at the very initial phase, I would see uh, the importance of having prepared for getting the business back to normal, right? And then in the second phase to deal with the changes in the customer customer behavior, and that both of uh, this would need uh, that the organizations or airlines to be prepared in, in their digital strategy. Absolutely, coming out of this is going to be um, so important. Um, next question that, that came in: Can you uh, talk to any AI use cases in the aviation industry you've come across? Right. In fact, uh, there are many. So we have been talking about bots, right? Um, so the first uh, the reference uh, that was there in my introduction was about a chatbot that we developed, uh, and it was 
uh, a very uh, i would say a basic use case to start with which was just to you know do away with the lengthy uh, faqs that typically any airline has can i do this can i take this into my along with me in my journey so and so on right so nice. for for travelers there are so many questions and to go through those uh, you know pages of faqs was very cumbersome so we kind of digitized them in all all those faqs into a bot where it was a conversational where it was also available across channels so be it facebook messenger or any other digital channel that was available so uh, a simple example to start with okay. okay thank you so in the in the second example that you get case study example that that you uh, gave deepak the rpa one what sort of processes were automated um was it frontline business processes or internal it operations and uh, can you give any specific examples right so um it was a core business processes um so i i think i gave an example when i was walking through the adoption mm -hmm. slide right so when we talk of automation right we, we are keenly looking at how we can free up our workforce from doing you know mundane things right that that can be done otherwise as well so for example uh, if you look at airline industry there are so many uh, you know standards and operating procedures and uh, you, you know certain steps that needs to be completed before uh, you know we can give a go ahead to the next task right some of these involve manual intervention but there are many that can be done without manual intervention and as a initial step what we did was to eliminate those uh, you know processes from the you know people where there was no manual intervention just to give an example uh, when uh, an air a new uh, a new airplane is inducted there are there are host of processes involved in this activity a lot of that uh, you know can be automated can be done by applications than you know waiting for someone to just do a tick mark uh, mm -hmm. on a, on their diary so that was an example that i wanted to cite here. okay all right great well we are right on time and deepak thank you for keeping us that way and i uh, very much appreciate your your presentation and a, a virtual round of applause thank you very much deepak